So, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here in such a beautiful place. Uh, my name is Jesus Barrientos, and I'm a type designer and professor researcher from University of Puebla in Mexico. And my participation is entitled Four Categories in Type Classification, a strategy to organize type material for graphic designers. Uh, classification, uh, there are a lot of subjects around typography. Whether to learn how to design type or how to design with type, one of particular complexity is type classification. Not only to learn it, but to know the goods that can come from graphic designers by its understanding. But before I continue, I have a confession to make. When I was a student, I came to hate type classification. I found it deeply confusing. As you can see in this pixelated digital picture taken with a Sony Mavica, uh, when I faced it for the first time in my early education as a graphic designer, it seemed to require the finest memorizing skills. Learning it apparently relied on dealing with words and adjectives that not all the time made sense for me, like Egyptians or Garalds or uh, Egipcias y Garaldas. It felt like those words had to mean something per se. And if they didn't, there was no problem as long as you remember those words exist. Honestly, it was hard for me to keep track on each and every single name by the moment. And by the moment I finally acquired the box of classification to say some, I had to learn another one, like the one Brinkhurst did in the elements of typographic style, only to discover more peculiar words that supposedly described letter forms, like the lyrical modernist, that even today I'm not quite sure of what it's all about. I managed to complete the Bachelor in Graphic Design Education and I thought that trying to understand type classifications was over for me. But after a few years, I started to work part-time as a typography teacher and it became even worse because now I had to explain it to students. They became me. The same confusion in their faces staring at all of those names was like a persisting nightmare. In type classification, we find cases that may go from impractical simplicity to systems so intricate that are hard to get. Each and every one of these seems to require good memory, and at risk of keeping the user away from fully comprehension, sometimes for the high level of expertise of those classifications, and sometimes for the abstract concepts employed to describe typographic style. And I'm truly convinced that type classification can be a productive tool for graphic designers to improve time and resources. Hence my need to design a strategy for graphic design students towards a better understanding of type classifications. But most of all, to get the hand design of type categories and classification. To use type is relatively easy. Any person with access to a personal computer and a text edit software can choose a font edit body size and variants. This means that anyone can design text. However, to take such decisions thoroughly can be tricky. Dealing with type to get inside subjects like the is to get inside subjects like linguistics, communication, writing, history, semiotics, and many other areas that seems to have little in common with graphic design. Type allows designers to emphasize the intentions of a text, to give a profound meaning of the words, and to establish conceptual bonds between author and reader. Nowadays, we have endless options to choose fonts, pre-installed in software, free fonts, or with commercial license. But this wide range did not exist in the past, where every stage of font production belonged to a different process. Old school typographers possessed only the type material specifically required for doing their job. They didn't have thousands of fonts to guess what to work with. They even had only selected body sizes and the work was all about taking care of detail. Once they knew and had control over their own type material. I propose a three step didactic, didactic strategy for graphic design students to better understand the typographic material in their hands, in which we can find four categories, serif, sans serif, lettering, and decorative. Categorization, based on simple description, allows designers to gain control over their own working tools. The strategy follows three simple steps. 
step one. The first step is to, of this strategy is for the graphic designer to identify the elements of their personal type library. This means knowing the fonts they have in their workstations to gain control over it. Step two is to give order to this resource through categorization by their visual characteristics. The main difference between categories and classifications is that the first aims only to establish groups and it can work among any type classification. Because, well, there is no ground classification, just different ones, and I think they might be useful depending on the case and, of course, the person applying it. Type classifications may have their issues, but, well, that is a whole other subject for a whole a specific investigation. In an ideal world, type classifications should help graphic designers to understand typefaces and mostly to make good decisions at the moment of choosing a font and to avoid complicated practices, such as trying to develop a type instinct or to choose a font waiting uh, for a sign from the sky, as if it was playing like the Ouija board, waiting until the spirit tells you what font to use, but practices also include imitating or depending on outside indications or following trends. The proposal I have here today divides type material in four simple categories as follows. Serif, sans, deco, and hand. In the serif uh, category, we, have, or we can put any serif font. It doesn't matter the style, the contrast, or the thickness. In the sense, uh, we have uh, to put fonts without serif in any style you like. Deco is any font with some kind of decoration, such as ornaments, extra drawings to the letter form, effects like shadows, inlines, flares, etc. I'm still looking for a better name, uh, not to be confused this deco with the art deco, so I'm still working on it. But I wanted to use a short word to fit the others. And in the hand category would be any font that gives the impression of being hand drawn. This includes calligraphic, informal handwriting, or a shape that evokes a specific tool effect on its strokes. These four categories can also be divided in by its appearance from simple to complex. Or you can use it among other classification systems. This even allows to have multiple classifications working simultaneously. This even can work the dividing uh, these uh, categories of fonts by its functions as text and title, or how I like to call it, short and long text. This comes to mind because many serifs and sans fonts can consider apt to compose texts, like the one in books or newspapers, while the deco and the hand fonts are more usually applied to logo design, posters, headlines, etc. This is the original sketch of this categorization in Spanish. Uh, I remember you that this was strictly designed as a didactic material and it has been working well so far. It has called the attention of other institutions in, Mexi in Mexico, like Universidad Iberoamericana de Santa Fe, where it was publi published in a magazine called Didácticas in its number 66, and for the Universidad, Universidad Autónoma de Hidalgo, where it was presented last spring, and uh, it started to, to work among students and teachers over there. Finally, the third step in this strategy is to print proofs. Maybe with a pangram in different sizes, from 5 to 72, for say some, uh, to raise awareness on the student about the actual sizes of fonts installed in their computers. This could help graphic designers to gain control over space and dimensions. This might, uh, might sound archaic in a world where one can use a lot of digital font tools to organize your fonts. But we should not underestimate the importance of printed documents as the statement of existence. Any project requires hierarchies at the moment of presenting contents and that work should represent the visual voice of a text. That will always give notoriety to the content by its conceptual and contextual values 
text can and should help the reader to perceive the proper message authors want to give. If graphic designers organize their own type libraries through this criteria, uh, it would be easier to know, group, select, and choose the ideal font for design projects. Once categorized and classified, the fonts in the personal type libraries, comparing between fonts, considering options, and controlling the possibilities that we have to design, will be relatively easier to do. Even when these four categories strategy have a didactic approach, both for teachers and students, professional designers can implement it also to identify easily the right font to work with. <laughs>